So we're going to look at and analyze a very important part of mass spectrometry, and that part is fragmentation. So fragmentation occurs when we have our we have our our, our, the, our, the, our the sample, the, a molecule of our sample here, and we hit it with an electron beam. And so an electron hits this 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 molecule. A beam, the beam of electrons hits this molecule and can knock one of the electrons that was already on this molecule off. And what we have then is we have we have the same uh, molecular structure as the initial molecule. However, it now has a positive charge. So we can represent this using, if we wanted to write this using a, an equation, we could write this as, if we call the, this this this, this molecule that we started with, our sample molecule, if we call it molecule M, then we can say that if we start with molecule M and we add an electron, so this is this is one of the electrons in the electron beam, this is sort of a bombarding electron, then what we end up with is we end up with a positively charged ion which is the same chemical formula as our original molecule. However, it now has a positive charge. We get two electrons. So one electron has come in, hit this, hit this molecule, and taken, an elect and taken another electron with it. So that's how we can sort of represent this using an equation. Now, we often give this, this ion here, this M plus ion, a name. So because it's sort of the beginning of the mass, spect of the mass spectrometry process, uh, it's what we start with, and then this is then what can uh, fragment down to smaller pieces. So we call this uh, the molecular ion. We call this the molecular ion, or sometimes we call it the parent molecular ion. So that's the name we give to our, our this this first ion that is produced. Now, when this ion is produced, it's what we can call a radical, meaning it has an electron that is no longer paired. So the electron that was knocked away was uh, previously in, in in an electron pair in this molecular structure, but as this electron has disappeared, it's left the other electron that it was paired with all by itself. And so this is what we can call a radical. Now, radicals are often extremely unstable. Radicals are often very unstable, and for that reason, they are. And for that reason, they all, they often break down into smaller pieces. So, in almost every case, uh, molecular ions will, will break down into smaller pieces. However, in in some subs for some samples, uh, the molecular ion will not many of the molecular ions will break down into smaller samples. In which case, perhaps the biggest peak on this uh, on this graph here will be caused by the molecular ion. However, in other cases, almost every molecular ion will break down, will break down, and it will be a very small peak that is caused by this molecular ion. So now that we've got this molecular ion, this this breaks down again into smaller and smaller pieces. And so, what happens if if this molecular ion breaks down into two smaller particles? Then only one of those particles can carry the positive charge with it. Only one of the one of the uh, one of the particles will keep uh, an extra electron, and so stay as a as a neutrally as as a neutral and uncharged atom. And we and we denote that that is a free radical. We denote that as a free radical like this. So what happens is that the positive charge stays with uh with this this substance this bit this substance B here, and this substance A that's left over has no charge. However, it still has an unpaired electron. So it's what we call a free radical. So we denote that free radical by a dot here. And so what can happen is that uh, this can happen in both ways. The way in which the charge goes is um, is can it can it, the, the charge can be can end up with with particle A or with particle B. So the other possibility for an equation for the, for the decay is this here. And so obviously because of the nature of mass spectrometry equipment, it's relying on charged particles to curve through a magnetic field. So in that case, only so these two will not be picked up by their uh, by the mass spectrometer. If we want to look at it mathematically, it's because if we look at their mass on charge ratio, it's undefined because there is no charge. E is equal to zero, and so we can't work out a mass charge ratio. 
And so it's only these two that will be picked up by the mass spectrometer. So in almost every case, uh, we'll be able to see both of the fragments uh, on, on our graph down here. Now, down here we have an example of a, of a mass spectrometry graph. So it is the mass spectrometry, it's sort of the, the, the graph of different masses over charge and their intensities for ethanol. So we know that ethanol looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at all these, we're going to go through each of these peaks and figure out the fragment which caused this peak, which caused each of the peaks. So we're starting with ethanol. Now the, the molecular formula for ethanol is C2H60. And so the carbons have a mass of 12 each, the hydrogens have a mass of 1 each, and the oxygen has a mass of 16. So what we're starting with is 12 plus 12 plus 16 plus 6. And so we're starting with a mass of 46. And so therefore, the mass on charge at 46 will be caused by this parent molecular ion. We've got a C2H60, and so this peak will be caused by the c 2 h 6 zero iron like that now we when we're when we're analyzing which peak has been caused by which fragment it's important we have to we have to be able to look at the molecular structure and keep that in our minds so if we look at this chemical formula here we might think that okay maybe maybe a carbon could disappear and we could end up with a fragment of ch60 however if we look at the at the uh, chemical structure or the, the molecular structure of this of this molecule, then we can see that there's no way we can lose just a carbon. If this carbon here was removed, then all of these hydrogen atoms here would also have to be removed with it. So we can never we we have to use a bit of common sense and a bit of an understanding of the chemical structure of a molecule in order to help us figure out which uh, which fragments are, are possible uh, from a given molecular ion. Now, so obviously, if we have a mass on charge ratio of 45, the only way we could get that is by losing a hydrogen. So probably any one of these hydrogens really, in theory, could be could be lost. And so we know that this peak is going to be ca ca caused by a particle with a formula of C2H50+. Now... If we look here, we've got a pretty big peak. This is our base peak, remember? So we can give this over here relative intensity of 100%. Now, if we look here, then this has a mass on charge of 31. Now, we're going to assume for now that all of our charges are only uh, plus 1. And in this case, uh, we, can, we can know that for sure because if our mass on charge equals 31, and say our charge was more than one, say our charge was two, then that means our mass would have been 62. And we know that we've started with a mass of 46. So that is not possible in this case. So we know that uh, the charge that caused this peak was a charge of one, and therefore the mass of the fragment that caused it was in fact 31. So we've lost a group with, a, so the, the fragment that's disappeared, the free radical that's disappeared, uh, had a mass of 15. So if we look here, what chunk could have fallen off this molecular structure that has a mass of 15 to leave a fragment that had a mass of 31? Well, if carbon has a mass of 12 and hydrogens have a mass of 1 each, we can see that it's quite clear that this group here was the one that fell off. We have 12 plus 3 to make 15. And so this particle here, this or this leftover uh, section here was what was left. That is what caused this peak. And so if we write it like this, this is what caused our big peak. Now if we move on to our last peak, this has a mass of 29. And so we can see that what we've lost, the fragment that we've lost, uh, had a mass of 17. And so we know that if carbons are 12, then we can't have lost, we can't have lost, we have to, we have, to have lost more than this group here. So we must have lost more than a CH3 group. So perhaps we lost a CH3 group and two other hydrogens. So this could have been caused by... So if we just clear up our molecule, molecular uh, structure drawing. So we still have... This is still CH3O+. Now there are two ways that we could have created 
this 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 peak with a with this this peak with a mass on charge ratio of 29. We could have either lost our OH group, our hydroxyl group, and be left with 12, 24, uh, the mass of the carbon atoms combined with an extra five gives 29. Alternatively, we may have lost this group here and these two. So that would obviously be a two-step process. So perhaps uh, we, the peak number, the peak with a mass on charge of 31 was created, and then from this fragment here, uh, a, 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 uh, a fragment with the formula of CO H plus was created. So that means that uh, on currently we haven't drawn here, we haven't looked at the details uh, for the, the fragments with smaller mass on charge ratios. And so obviously in each of these cases, so the one possibility is CoH plus, the other possibility is everything minus the hydroxyl group. So C2H5, these both have masses of 29. Now, in either case, the piece that was split off should have its mass uh, somewhere, should have its mass on charge ratio somewhere here. So, obviously, if we're, uh, if we're looking at this, then uh, we know that because there was a CH3O plus group uh, created, that means the CH3 group was dropped off. We know that there should be another, another peak down here. So I've only drawn several of the peaks just to get a, a basic idea of the analysis, but we know that there would be a peak with a mass on charge of 15 here. However, if we haven't actually analysed all the way down to these, these other mass on charge ratios, then we can't tell where, which of these uh, would be, which of these caused this peak. Possibly both did. However, if we want to look in more detail, if, uh, if we look at the top one, if the top one is what created this peak here, then that means we would have first lost the CH3 group and then the two hydrogens. So that means these hydrogens probably would have uh, would have been lost separately. And so there would be mass on charge peaks of one caused by that here. Uh, alternatively, if we're looking at if uh, if it was uh, this group here that was created, then this uh, that would mean that the hydroxyl group came off as one, and so we would have a peak with a mass on charge ratio of 17. So here we can't actually tell right now what uh, what fragment caused this peak here. There are a couple of options and we need more information about the lower end of our of our mass on charge ratio spectrum down here. However for now we can see we can look at how we can analyze this process. So not only can we look at uh, the masses of the fragments causing each peak and figure out the possible possible options. However if for example if we have a mass of 29 here that means we've lost a fragment or fragments totaling a mass of 17. So obviously we've either lost a hydroxyl group with a mass of 17, or we've lost a couple of fragments and their total masses were 17. And so in each of those cases, we can look at the masses of those fragments that have been lost. So we can look at the mass, the mass on charge ratio of the hydroxyl group. And if the hydroxyl group was what if the disappearance of the hydroxyl group was what caused this peak, then that means if if, uh, if both of these equations were to go ahead, then there should also be a hydroxyl groups. Uh, there should, then the hydroxyl group would also have its own peak uh, at, a, at, at a mass on charge ratio of 17. So basically, if we're, if we're talking, if we're looking at a certain piece of the molecule getting chopped off in order to cause a, uh, a certain peak, then we should have two two mass on charge uh, two. Uh, we should have peaks at the mass on charge ratio of what was left over and uh, at the mass on charge ratio of what was chopped off because uh, both of those, the, this, this reaction here, this process here could occur in, in, in each way. Uh, of the two fragments produced, either one could be the iron. And uh, uh, in, in different cases, for different molecules, some will decay in one way so as to create a hydroxyl group iron and others will decay in the other way such that the hydroxyl group is an uncharged radical denoted by OH dot, and we are left with uh, the rest of the molecule as an ion. And so it's important to look at, you know, the other mass on charge, the other peaks that will be caused by each fragmentation process. So here we've, we've got a few definitions. We've got the parent molecular ion, and we can see this process in a little bit more detail and how it can happen in, in, in multiple different ways. And so that's how we go through our, our graph of relative intensity versus mass on charge to really break down the structure of our sample molecule.